What's up, YouTube? Over at Atomic Sand today, me and Aaron uh, help the guys work on the dredge a little bit. You know, we've had a terrible time keeping that thing up and running. I really feel like we can. Oh, you think so? So anyway, we're gonna come out here and see what the guys have got going on. The um, the ladder that holds the cutter head is cracked, and so the guys supposedly have the dredge up on dry land. So me and hey, Aaron. Gonna go check it out and see uh, see what we can do to help, and hopefully uh, not get stuck. I don't know if I drive down this. Oh, this steep. This is steep part. This is clay, <laughs> and then it's not steep all the way down. And they got the flat pad down there. See? Uh. dirty window down. Uh. What's up to you, man? I mean, I'll, I'll bet my lunch on. All right, we got a lunch bet that we won't get stuck. Got it. Yeah, as long as it doesn't rain <laughs> while we're down there. I think, I think with the sand exposed like it is, I don't think the rain messes up that bad like it did last time. And just as those during clay areas. Yeah. Roll my dirty window down. Yeah, we, I think we'll get back up. Oh, this is too soft. The guys got the Hyundai 290 down here. Getting a little bit of that red material off the top of our white sand. Oh, there's somebody. That'll make it interesting. <laughs> yeah, uh, we like challenges. Well, like I said, if nothing else, if we do get stuck in it, you know, make for an interesting video. Something can get us out. Yeah, something somewhere can get us un unstuck. All right, we'll go walk over here and see what we're dealing with. <laughs> yeah, that's a really strong four-wheeler. That's well. We used it to pull the dredge up, up on dry land. Not really. This is cutter head. We showed this in a previous video with it spinning, wearing on down though. All it does is spin down on the bottom of the, the lake out there, unearthing the sand. So then the pump, this is called a fish mouth, that smiley face looking thing there. That's where the sand gets pumped up. And then I was just sent all the way over to the plant. Big old chunk of metal. <clears throat> Robert, what what you done tore up now? There you go. Here's the big GIW pump that sends the sand, the bearing housing, and our new 500 horsepower electric motor we had to replace. So ever since the lightning strike, it's just been one thing after the other gone wrong. Had to put some new electrical boxes in hear it humming a lot of juice comes out to this thing it's 4160 so 4160 volts running out and you can see we installed some uh, power line floats that'll keep the power line up off the bottom of the lake so there's less risk of us accidentally cutting it or you know anything happening to it down there now this is this called a spud so that is our pivot point so what that does we lower it 
pretty much just sticks in the bottom of the lake and holds the back end of the dredge and then we can swing back and forth uh, with the front so it really just kind of pivots um, so that's your brakes and that's what holds us steady we had to extend it because it wasn't long enough here recently Terry's up there throwing some sand operator pushing some material down to the water so when we do get her patched up and we can uh, get back to pumping sand so we don't run out our our stockpile which they got a pretty decent size pile over there so it buys us a little bit of time to be down but not a lot so we'll go up here and check and see what the uh the actual crack in the weld looks like whenever eric gets done cutting some metal out of the way yeah it's cracked pretty damn good that's for sure see the bite piece back Oh yeah. Huh. Ah. So you gonna plate it how though? I mean, I go come on. There. How you gonna do the patch this here? That I'll have to fill it in and then plate. It. Okay. Even if I have to come up with another piece. One inch plate come off of here to here and just cut it out. And that's that. Uh huh. Gusset it up. Gusset it, yeah. <clears throat> if, I, well, if I cut this crap here off, I can do it on the outside. And it'll make it stronger than button in. Yeah, make, make it a lot easier easier on you too. Yep, I can do both sides up. It's got to have the inside and outside to make it over. That? But it's cracking right behind this damn gusset right here. That's what. Aggravating. It's going right up behind this gusset. Yeah. Straight up. So to fix that, this plate. You got to get rid of that plate. That plate's going to come out of there. Yeah. How big a piece of one inch plate you got up there? You got a good bit or? I got a strip over there. I got some three quarter plate too. Three quarter plate. Got a little bit of junk here and there. Right. Cut stuff out of it. Well, if you take if you take that plate and cut it all the way out, then you take one and weld it to, you know, to the ladder. You could double it up, even if you wanted to, couldn't you? <laughs> get get tooked off. <clears throat> You got enough plate? Hold, hold long it's enough to it's build one. It is, it's to it to oh yeah. Way, so you park yeah. Out this way. You only got these two main runners going down. There. Right. If you had four. You had one here. And one down there. Right yeah. Yeah. And then tied together. It be I got you. So along with the torque of the cutter head spinning, then you're pushing the machines from side to side too. Is twisting and. So I can do in this because you ain't got the two runs. You know? Yeah. And you had four. If you had another like that coming off right there between the four <clears> straight out. They're tied all in together. Be a lot yeah. It wouldn't even have to be that heavy too. Maybe that's how we ought to build a new yeah, one. The new one definitely yeah, make, make four arms. Yeah. Point, four arms and then gusset between all the arms, all the way down. There's a lot of weight hanging out here. Plus the dredge is going side to side. And the cutter head spinning too, causing it to flex. And that's why we're cracking. So we gotta build a new ladder. We're gonna patch this and then build a entirely new 
new ladder stronger. So hopefully we can last a whole lot longer because downtime sucks. All right, so while the guys get that patched up and go get their materials, I figure we walk over here, check on Terry and just kind of inspect this whole slope. See how the sand's looking. So you can see that dozer backs way up there and then he'll push material obviously down to the water here or the water's edge he can't go all the way to the edge or he'd be in the bottom of the lake but uh i probably explained this before too but pushing down that whole bank you know we're probably a hundred and something feet deep down here but as he pushes from up there he mixes all the different colored sands together which each color is usually a different gradation by the time we mix them all and get it down here then it's pretty much got everything we need in it to make our gradation for concrete sand if we didn't mix it like for example this white sand here super coarse got huge chunks in it if we were to wash that and have only that then our sand would be too coarse for uh for concrete production so we got to have the fines mixed in with it as well Terry's throwing that sand clay down. That sand clay's actually got a good bit of fines in it. So that'll mix in with the real coarse concrete sand that we just looked at and uh, hopefully make the perfect, perfect blend. That old 290 there, that Hyundai's been a good one, man. That thing has got a pile of hours on it and it still fires right up. Run smooth. Make some good equipment. So there's a testament to the longevity of Hyundai right there. I think it's 17,000 hours on that machine. Which usually, and it hasn't been rebuilt either. Usually 10,000 hours you're looking at, you know, starting to have to rebuild. Our cat dozer we got from May Heavy Equipment up in Columbia. Been a good one. Have, I just about have to have a high track in this environment to keep that rear sprocket out of the mud. Here's some kaolin. This purple stuff is kaolin. And we sell it to folks. It's just almost like Play-Doh, but it forms an impermeable layer so we sell a lot of this as core material for pond dams and pond liners they'll lay this stuff out pack it down and once you do it almost it forms a uh you know a waterproof barrier so that you know the pond obviously will hold water or the dam won't let water go through it's got this neat like modeling look to it here's a good piece See how it's kind of lots of different colors? Just how it settled, you know, however, million, however many millions of years ago. That's how it settled, and then it's just been compacted and compacted to, uh, to the point that it's at now. And now we're unearthing it after all those years. But you can see in that wall over there, a good example of all the different layers. walk up here and say hey to Terry this is a pretty white sand that's what we use for beach sand also masonry sand guys laying block and uh, even making block a local company will take it they like the white sand because then they can mix color with it and uh, make the consistent colored block
Not a bad view from this office up here. Pretty blue lake. Make you think you're in the Bahamas for a minute. Here would be, I guess, some of the younger kaolin deposits. Just because we're about 40 feet up from where we just were. So, a few little different colors. Even got some gold in here. Little streaks of white. Also mixed with sand. Actually, the kaolin, believe it or not, if you were to wash this, contains sand particles in it as well so as it breaks down going through the pipeline we'll wash off the clay and the sand will be left behind giving us even more sand hey this is cool check this out i think it's just amazing you know digging this stuff up thinking about how long ago it was deposited it's kind of neat geology is pretty cool how the earth is made up, all these different layers. Bunch of purple kale in there. That's about a 120 foot high wall over there. And we've got to get a three to one slope on that for reclamation, just like kind of this here. You got to get it sloped out to uh, satisfy the state's demands. But you know, you got to be responsible if you're going to be in mining uh, because Earth's, Earth's given us this material for construction. The least we can do is leave the area where we mined it, you know, as good as we can. I think what would be cool, once we do get done digging here, turn this into uh, like an aquatic uh, habitat for ducks and wildlife. I've seen them do that with some rock quarries before, pretty cool. So maybe we'll be able to do something like that ourselves too on down the road. But for now, we just gotta keep on digging. I was digging around in the layers a while ago. I wanted to show you guys this. So this layer is darker. You can kind of see just one real thin layer. Looked like maybe from there to there running through here but there's big rocks in it and we have found pieces of amethyst they're not like you know jewelry grade at least we haven't found any uh, yet but it's so cool how every once in a while you'll just have a like a purple purplish this one's dirty I don't know if you can see it but it's like I guess this is smoky quartz I don't know Maybe some of y'all are smarter than me, or hell, most of y'all are smarter than me, but you know, why would it be, you know, why would you just have one piece of amethyst every once in a while in this conglomeration? So maybe some geologists watch this video and can explain it. Just put it in the comments below, because I sure would like to know. It'd be real interesting. So I'm gonna dig around a little bit more and see if I can't. Can't find one, but pretty rock, especially when it's washed up, cleaned up. Uh, you can get addicted to do, digging over here, just trying to find the, the purple amethyst. In this episode, a Aaron tries to not get stuck. Tries. Because it'll be on the interweb for everybody to see. Oh, we got it. Oh, you can make it through this little spot up here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> On stretch. You made it. Well, almost made it. I think we're good now. You got on some hard dirt. Oh, Dodge, she don't play. You got di um, fuel in the transfer tank? No, the transfer tank's uh, empty. That would help if you did. Just, just tools. Yeah, you got uh, enough tools to weigh it down, that's for sure. Weighing in at about 11,600 pounds. Yeah. And and totaling, well, we don't even want to talk about how much money 11,600 pounds. We don't talk about the money that I <laughs> spent on tools. Right, right, right. Okay, well, we made it. So this, go, this is the drive shaft 
for the cutter head out there on the dredge. So what's it go back to? This goes to another piece right here? It goes to a hydraulic pump. That uh, hydraulic it goes motor, yeah. right to the hydraulic motor? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> Man, you're a nut. <laughs> you get it? You see, you see what I did there? Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. Back to work. Oh, well, before we get back to work, check out this cool old stove that I've yet to paint and redo. But this came along with the dredge. I worked it into the deal with that fella up in Ohio. Isn't this thing cool, Aaron? Mm -hmm. Need to sandblast it and paint it. It's called a parlor stove. They actually, the... I was, I was telling about my, my parlor stove. I was just throwing that in. <laughs> <laughs> this is cool too. I'll go back to that. Okay. No, this is neat. This, all the wealthy people way back in the day, if you had one of these in your parlor, then you was high class. They'd paint them all up gold. And uh, the unfortunate part is it had like a, a crown, almost like a king's crown that sat on the top. But the guy didn't have it. He lost it. Okay, now, Aaron, this is <laughs> this is the hydraulic motor. <laughs> the one that's on there now is larger than that, but that's the same same setup. Yeah. With the pistons on it. Same scenario. Yeah, like an old arrow. Hmm, that's pretty neat. All right, here's our old mudcat. So, if we don't get stung up by wasps which I'm sure there's quite a few. Yeah, I don't know, it's still warmed up though. So we're gonna locate the battery and uh, see what she'll do. Where the battery? Huh, somebody, somebody found a snake. This site's famous for snakes which is something that I absolutely hate. No wash nest? Mm -mm. Got a good captain's chair. There's a lizard <laughs> book. Top corner there. Oh well, yeah. Yeah, this is a really nice antique captain's chair. And the former there, look, the former captain liked his fireball. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. I still would be careful, even though you passed the kick test. Oh yeah. Um, good thing they got a ginormous battery compartment yeah. for that one battery. I hate to not have room to get to it. I'm telling you. <laughs> hey, there is a wasp nest right there on the bottom of that intake manifold. Oh, hey guys. I'm sure we can find something to uh, squirt some with. Something to bait them in, yeah. Oh, yeah. Big old red wall. Mm. They hurt real bad. You got some brake cleaner? I might have some wall spray. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> no. Yeah, but it's empty, thank goodness. No. It's right by my face. Oh, <laughs> there's another one right where you were. Mm. I'm going to go stand over here. Yeah, that one's live too. He's up in that corner. There are probably a few more. I wouldn't doubt. Yeah, I'm going to go see what I can find. Yeah, we better do that.
Yeah, if you can get right there. Yeah, you can go around the JCB. Pop in right there. Or pull straight. Yeah. That don't smell good. Can smell up? And be careful, they will blow. I keep it yeah, black. It was running out, out of the cap. Uh, was it? Yeah, it's not now. You gotta be careful, though. Maybe I got it back. <laughs> Red wire tricked me too. Yeah, so uh, anyway. Okay, well, that's what happens when you hook a <laughs> red spray paint. It's whoever, <laughs> whoever the hell had the red spray paint is their fault. Huh. That's interesting. I've never hooked one up backwards before. Yeah, we just purged some of the old acid out. Yeah. Well, good. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. Battery purge. It's also really good for this metal battery box. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's safe too. Yeah. Well, it's good for the whole thing. It's yeah. just a big metal boat. Right. So no. Well, at least if the battery did explode, if there was any wasp left on that one nest right there, it would have got them. So, I mean, it wouldn't have been without yeah. nothing. Yeah. All right. I bet we'll probably we'll have better results. This time smells better. I think it'll go next time we give it just a, yeah, a little bit. another minute. Yeah. I think she'll Yeah, I think she'll fire off. The, uh, and I guess the pump and all is disengaged. I think so. But we'll find out. <laughs> but we'll find out. I'm gonna look under this chair. Make sure no nest. There. Oh, this 
a cool old dredge. I'm still looking for Wasteth. Got a ruin up there. I would assume this is how you engage it. I would think so, yeah. Hmm. Well, it's, I can tell you this much. It's either engaged or disengaged at this moment. As long as it's one or the two. And I would assume this controls the auger. No. Or, well, yeah, well, there's auger. Reverse auger, auger so. neutral forward. Yeah, yeah. What the hell kind of tires are those? Huh, I don't know. Snap ring pliers. Homemade, it's like nails. I would think this is your, when you're on the cable, maybe. Yeah. And this is probably up and down on the uh, cutter head. Maybe. Yeah, you got up and down on the ladder and then you've got a guard on the cutter head that Mm -hmm. Well, can't go into neutral just yet. Yeah. Something's just kind of bound up. But it might, it might not move. So we got disengaged. Auger PSI. Left and right fuel tank. Main pump pressure. Auto bilge. Main vacuum. Oil pressure. Temp. RPM hey, a battery, and bad battery. Let me cut the key and see if it does anything. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, on 13. It's pretty healthy. Yeah, I think. Let's try it. Okay. Let's over. Yep. All right, come on, baby. It's already disengaged. Uh, may have to give it some some juice in the cab there. That should be that spinny knob. That... Yeah, there you go. Just give uh, give this guy a couple twists and see if it'll screw out. By the way, is it moving? Yeah. All right, just pull straight up on it. Nothing. It says release. Let's see. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Release it's this way. There we go. Now yeah. we're increasing throttle. Dirty. 
dirty. Uh-huh. You have to let me know because the damn windshield's so dirty. See something moving. We're loading down, but we're not moving. That's It started to move real slow. It's free. It might be pulling air. Hey! We busted something. Maybe. It's, it's running out pretty good. Detroit. Love them things, man. Badass. <laughs> we'll see what we tore up. Okay. So we've got a cover here. Yeah, it felt like it was bound up some kind of. I wonder if the hoses didn't have fashion. air in them and it was burping the air out, maybe. Cause it was, it looked, it's, it's free. It's free to a point. For the most part, yeah. It yeah. feels like it's camming over on something. Sure. Pull it. Oh yeah, definitely something in there holding it. I bet you that's, that's that shifter. It's still in forward. I couldn't get it in neutral, you think? Maybe that's for this, because you do need the ability, or do you? Well, no. Which which one were you pulling on the handle or the shifter? I was pulling on the handle, making you know make, making this turn. But what I'm saying is maybe the shifter controls the maybe so. Yes, yeah, speed direction. speed forward and back, and the handle maybe the handle was the winch. I didn't pay attention if the winch moved or not. I couldn't see. The windshield's so dirty. Let me see if I can jump back up there. It wouldn't, I tried to go in neutral while she was running and it wouldn't do it. Yeah. We ain't got no damn instruction. Tell you what, you buy a new piece of equipment. I mean, this isn't <laughs> obvious here. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I wonder if it's cable driven. That's why it's I don't know, it doesn't feel free. You can't see anything under here. You could try to, uh, you could try to spin it now. I mean, I seriously doubt that it's. Well, I think something, so, something 
so that it reverse auger. auger so i mean like if you get stumps or something yeah you need the ability to back, it out. to back it out all right and then that controls the speed yeah so you were running this valve though right this one that one yep huh. yeah because this one that moves freely this is your i think this is the moving winch so go forward because oh, it, it runs in a straight line yeah because it sticks so you pull it and let it yeah. winch you yeah. yeah all meanwhile while you're pumping yeah so you're right so this should be the, the cutter but huh what are these? One of them. One of them's, got, the, one of them's up down. One of them should be the door. Well, up and down you ran. Yeah, you no. Pick the ladder up. But I can't remember which one it was. Yeah. And there's a there's a door. There's two cylinders there, but they're un, they're unplugged, and there's a come along on it, holding it in place. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's see if we can't get to take this off. Maybe try to lift it up, but that side's boogered. Yeah, use your key. Universal. Might better watch out for wasps on this one too. I can raise it up slow. Clear. Clear. What we got? Uh, a drop reservoir. And pump. Right there. And pump. So That's where the cable's coming to. So it does. Yeah, but it's screwed up. See. Cable seized up in the. Oh, that's why she wouldn't move. Yeah, that's broke off right there. That should be locked up there to keep this straight yeah. so the cable can't bend like this. Can you feel neutral? Maybe if we take the cable loose. Yeah. Grab 716. Alright, you can take it loose. So we found out that this cab hinges and it's got a jack so you can jack the whole cab over and get to all the pump assembly but we blew a line on the jack so we had to push it over but nonetheless pretty cool I'll show you what it looks like on the inside so there she is access the bearing housing pump and everything but Aaron and I are trying to find a tag hang on okay trying to find a tag on this pump so that we can call our buddy and get a pump curve on it and see what all she'll do and see how far and also how much head what do they do send water to the moon that's right or at least up to the top of the plant it's gotta be on this on the i like that clean out cap i do too yeah it was open just like second ago it hinges over so you can get in there and Okay. Your sticks out. Yep, stumps and junk. Mm -hmm. See if you can see the impeller. Have to go back and watch the video mm -hmm. and see if we can see it. <clears throat> I don't see no tag still though. I want to say, is it a Cornell? No, this is a Morris. Morris? Is what it said, yeah. There's something right there. There's some data right there on this front plate. You see it down in there? Oh, yeah. Let's see if I can All right, take folks. Photo. Oh, yeah. We got another phone on the job site. That's right. Another phone and camera. These damn phones did change or made it a whole lot easier for stuff like this. Oh, though. yeah. Oh, man. You can take pictures by hitting the volume. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's what I mean. Okay, well, let's see if we can find a, find something. Then we gotta go to the store and get new hydraulic lines for the cutter head up there and a new 
uh, cutter head cable seized up. So stay tuned. Check out this cutter head. So this is the one I was showing y'all earlier that the guy built. So he used some all thread to build the cage. This homemade cutter head. Looks pretty gnarly though. I like it. Got nice teeth on it though, Aaron. This thing is gonna rip through some stuff. Hopefully that's why Yeah. <laughs> I don't know though, judging by the all thread cage, probably. it probably is not. I do too. I do too. No. Yeah, because the stuff's already been pre mined. So it should be loose. We just dislodge it as this thing turns. And then sucks it up there. No, he was right. That's all it was. It was just air locked or hydraulic locked. You should get that sound on camera. I like it. Sounds like my stomach after Taco Bell. I love Taco Bell. Yeah. Taco Bell don't love you. Uh, it, it agrees with me, all right. <laughs> all right, let's go get some hoses. Let's do it. All right, so Aaron and I just got back with our brand new hoses, fired her up. Now we got another little problem. That o ring in there is shot. You got one of them? I wonder if we have an o ring kit here. Well, it shouldn't be dumping oil out of this at all, though, is the thing. So that, that o-ring needs to be to keep track of it. Yeah, see here's the actual problem is... Oh, no. It's probably that o-ring. I have that one. I can't pick, though. Let me go find a pick. All right. There's our planetary gears. Well, we'll get it fixed in a minute, hopefully. And then something else will blow up, I'm sure. Things sat here for about two years. So, a lot of dry rotted stuff. We're just going to have to kind of go through it systematically and replace what needs to be replaced. <laughs> 